I tried the woodpecker method for about 20 minutes, and I was using a rubber mallet instead of a metal hammer with a piece of plastic over the outside, but I could not get this Spiro 2 here to crack open. Um, a lot of people online say that the Spiro 2 is a different type of plastic and it, the cracking method doesn't work for it. So I'm going to cut it open, and then if I do a good enough job, I'll be able to put it back together with some glue. If not, I'll put it in a Christmas ornament or something. This guy is almost completely open. There's a few places that are still connected, but there's a lot of places that, you know, will have a gap. I'm having trouble with it in the clamp now because the clamp is pushing the thing closed and I'm binding the saw at this point. It was real easy to follow the seam with my coping saw. A hacksaw would probably also work, but now I'm going to have to kind of hold it out on the table and I think saw, kind of prop it open a little and saw through those few areas I left that's the things holding it closed right now. Alright, so that's a part. It's relatively clean. I have a marked line. So that black line right there I marked before I started cutting so that I know exactly how it's supposed to go back together. And I suspect I'll be able to glue that thing back together. We'll have to figure out what type of plastic this is and what type of glue works on it. I need to clean all the shavings of the saw to try this out. But now we have the actual robot itself and it sure does look like those batteries are bulging which is probably the cause of my problem and what needs replacing here. After a few weeks of shipping time, I have received my replacement 702035 batteries. You might notice that they are shorter, or I should say the original batteries are shorter. It looks like some of that is because they bulged up. So upon further inspection, these guys do have the battery protection circuit board, but instead of being mounted at the end, they've kind of folded it over the top of the cell. So it's definitely shorter. Um, you know, I measured this guy. It is 35 millimeters, maybe 36 to the very end there. Um, you know, less than 7 millimeters thick and 20, 20 millimeters wide. So this guy is meeting its specs. It's just these guys, which are labeled the same, seem to be in smaller. I've been measuring these openings, and it's about 31, maybe 32 millimeters. Definitely not 35. So if you're looking to replace these batteries... I would suggest a 70-20-30 or 70-20-25 type size. So in this battery compartment, there's a place for this capacitor right here to fit right at the end there. And it has this little plastic wall that sticks in that makes it even shorter than that guy over there. I was able to get this guy stuffed in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this guy here even with that circuit board folded as far back as it can go, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in there without shaving down that piece of plastic. Okay, I shaved down this piece of plastic right here with a rotary tool just to be able to get that battery in. There should still be enough room here for the capacitor, although it might be difficult to get it down past the edge of the battery. Alright, both those batteries are quite tight fits. You can see here I do have room behind that battery in that corner. For that capacitor right there still. Now I'm just going to cut the wires to the original batteries and solder them on to the new battery wires. I'm going to have a little bit of wire up on top of this battery, but I have those circuit boards sticking up anyway, so if I can't get this plastic case on top, 
of the circuit boards, a little extra wire there isn't going to help hurt. So on these two cells, the red wire is positive, the white wire is negative. Here, the blue wire is positive and the black wire is negative for that guy. All right, I verified it can charge on the charging base. You double tap to wake it up, the batteries are definitely connected and it's running. Get that here to slow things down. So I'm going to leave it to charge and then we'll try gluing it back into its ball. And these bulging lithium ion batteries are going to the household hazardous waste recycling place. Well, hasn't broken open yet. Alright, I put it in this little silicone cover here to get a little better grip on the Tarasso and ran it around for about 25-30 minutes and then I put it back on to charge, but um, it's working pretty well now.